بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ وی ول ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا مسلس آف دا پسٹیریئر کمپارٹمنٹ آف فارم اینڈ دا نروس اینڈ دا ویسلس آف دا پسٹیریئر کمپارٹمنٹ آف فارم فرسٹ آف آل وی ول ڈسکس دا مسلس آف دا پسٹیریئر کمپارٹمنٹ سی ہیئر ان دس ڈائیگرام یو کین سی دا پسٹیریئر کمپارٹمنٹ آف آرم دیر از ون مسل وچ از نیمڈ ایز ٹرائی سیپس بریکیائی مسل ٹرائی مینس تھری اینڈ سیپ از ریلیٹڈ ود دا ہیڈس اینڈ بریکیائی آرم دس از دا تھری ہیڈڈ مسل وچ از پریزنٹ ان دا پسٹیریئر کمپارٹمنٹ آف آرم دس از ٹرائی سیپس مسل ون از لیٹرل ہیڈ ون از میڈیل ہیڈ اینڈ ون از دا لانگ ہیڈ دیر از انادر مسل وچ از نیمڈ ایز اینکونیس Triceps has three heads. One is long head, one is lateral head and one is medial head. Okay. The long head originates from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. I will show you a diagram in which it is shown that the long head is originating from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. One head is originating from the scapula. This is the longest head. Then one is the lateral head which is originating from the posterior surface of the humerus superior to the radial groove okay and the medial head is also on the posterior surface of the humerus inferior to the radial groove so two muscles are originating from the posterior surface of the humerus one is superior to the radial groove and one is inferior to the radial groove they are present on the posterior surface of the humerus because these are the muscles of the posterior compartment of arm triceps is inserted on the proximal end of the olecranon process of the ulna and the fascia of the forearm it is supplied by the radial nerve radial nerve has a root value c6 c7 and c8 okay radial nerve is a nerve of the posterior compartment of arm it is the chief extensor of forearm the tricep is the chief extensor of forearm sometimes in viva they ask you that what is the extensor of the forearm or which muscle is the chief extensor of forearm so you will say that tricep Triceps brachii is the chief extensor of forearm or elbow. The long head resists the dislocation of humerus because it is originating from the humerus. So it is resisting the dislocation of the humerus, especially important during the adduction. Then the enconius muscle, it is originating from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Okay, it is inserted over the lateral surface of the olecranon process and the superior part of the posterior surface of the ulna. Both of these muscles, they are inserted. hurting over the ulna both of them are supplied by the radial nerve and these both muscles they are extending the forearm and conius is also stabilizing the elbow joint it may abduct the ulna during pronation see here in this diagram you can see the triceps muscle this is a triceps muscle this is the long head of the triceps then there is the medial head of the triceps and there is one lateral head of the triceps muscle So I have already told you that the long head originates from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. Then the triceps short head or this one, this is this one was the long head. See here, this is the long head. This is the short head and there is one medial head also. The short head or the lateral head, actually this is the lateral head. It is originating from the oblique strip of the bone above the spiral groove. See here, here there is a spiral groove. Okay, so this is. lateral head it is originating from the posterior surface of the humerus above the spiral groove okay then the medial head of the uh, triceps muscle it originates from the posterior surface of the humerus below the spiral groove and from the posterior surface of the medial and the lateral intermuscular septum so it is very easy to remember the long head see here this is the long head of the uh, triceps muscle it is originating from the infraglenoid tubercle then there are two heads one is lateral which is also called as the short head because as compared to the long it is short but it is long than the medial head this one is short or the lateral head the lateral head is originating from the posterior surface of the humerus above the spiral groove but the medial head of the which is the smallest one it is originating from the posterior surface of the humerus below the spiral groove okay so two muscles two heads they are originating from the humerus and one head is originating from the scapula they are inserted over the posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process of the ulna or they are inserted in the capsule of the elbow joint the radial nerve is the nerve supply of this muscle 
this muscle is the main extensor of the elbow i have already told you it is the main extensor of the forearm or main extensor of the elbow it support the head of the humerus during the abduction of the arm because the long head of the tricep is in it originated from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula okay so it is also supporting the head of the humerus during the abduction of the arm the muscle which is inserted over the uh, capsule of the elbow joint that part of the triceps muscle is called as articularis cubiti it is also called as subenconius because few fibers from the deep surface of the lower part of the medial head of the triceps become inserted into the back of the elbow joint capsule this part of the medial head is called as articularis cubiti muscle it pulls the capsule of the elbow joint posteriorly during the extension of the elbow joint see here the long head aids in the extension and adduction of the arm but it is the least active head the medial head is the workhorse of the forearm extension active at all speeds and in the presence or absence of resistance so medial head is the main forearm extensor then the lateral head is the strongest but it is recruited into activity primarily against the resistance when there is resistance then the lateral head will work pronation and pronation of the forearm do not affect the triceps operation so triceps activity is not affected by the pronation or the supination of the forearm what we have discussed that the long head is the least active head the medial head is the main workhorse of the forearm extension and the lateral head works only against the resistance now we will discuss the enconius muscle see here in this diagram this is enconius muscle it is a small triangular muscle on the posterior lateral aspect of the elbow this is the posterior lateral aspect of the elbow here this muscle is present it is usually partially blended with the triceps muscle the enconius helps the triceps in extending the forearm and it tenses the capsule of the elbow joint preventing its being pinched during extension it is also said to abduct the ulna during pronation of the forearm now we will discuss the nerve supply of the posterior compartment of arm so radial nerve with a root value of c5 6 7 8 and t1 which is a branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus this radial nerve is a nerve of the posterior compartment of arm the nerve takes origin behind the third part of the axillary artery in front of the subscapularis muscle latissimus dorsi muscle and the teres major muscle okay so these muscles they are posterior to the radial nerve because radial nerve is present in front of all these muscles the radial nerve descends behind the upper inch of the brachial artery it passes through the lower triangular space with the profunda brachii vessels remember this thing the name of the vessel the profunda brachii vessel which is a branch of the brachial artery it runs along with the radial nerve it passes through the spiral groove between the medial and the lateral head of the triceps muscle as i have already told you that the nerve which crosses any muscle or which passes through two heads of one muscle will supply that muscle so the radial nerve is crossing in between the medial and the lateral head of the triceps so it will supply the triceps the nerve pierces the lateral intermuscular septum of the arm to reach the anterior compartment it will come into the anterior compartment and the nerve descends in the deep groove between the brachialis and the brachioradialis with the anterior descending branch of the profunda brachii artery it terminates in front of the lateral epicondyle see here this point is very very important this radial nerve it comes in front and when it comes in front of the anterior compartment of arm it comes in front of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus we have discussed before that ulnar nerve passes behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus but the radial nerve as we see here that it is crossing in front of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it will divide into superficial terminal branch and a deep terminal branch the deep terminal branch is also named as posterior interosseous nerve 
now there are many branches of the radial nerve first of all in the axilla it gives three branches number one is the posterior nerve of the arm because the radial nerve is motor as well as sensory so it will give one sensory branch which will supply the posterior compartment or skin of the posterior compartment of arm by giving posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm then it will give a branch to the long head of the triceps this is the muscular branch again a branch to the medial head of the tricep this is also a muscular branch so in the axilla it will give three branches as we have discussed before that the median nerve and the ulnar nerve does not give any do not give any branch in the axilla but the radial nerve is giving three branches in the axilla one is posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm one is branch to the long head of the triceps and one to the medial head of the triceps then in the spiral groove see here this is the humerus this is anterior view and on the posterior side we have a spiral groove in the spiral groove it will give many branches out of which one branches to the lateral head of the triceps one branch to the median head of the triceps and it will continue supplying the anconeous muscle then it will give the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm see here it is giving lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm so here it will supply the skin of the lower part of the lateral compartment of the arm then it will give posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm as it is the posterior compartment nerve of arm as well as the forearm so it will supply the posterior cutaneous area of the forearm also so what are the branches in the spiral groove it is giving branch to the lateral head of the triceps it is giving branch to the medial head of the triceps and to the anconeous muscle it is giving lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm and posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm in the axilla it has given posterior cutaneous nerve of arm but in spiral groove it is giving posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm now in the groove between the brachialis and the brachioradialis when it comes anteriorly it is in between the brachialis muscle and the brachioradialis muscle here it gives branches to the brachialis muscle branch to the brachioradialis muscle and branch to the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle remember again we have discussed in the anterior compartment of arm that the brachialis is supplied by two nerves the medial part by the musculocutaneous nerve and the lateral part by the radial nerve so this nerve radial nerve is giving branch to the lateral fibers of the brachialis muscle branch to the brachioradialis muscle and branch to the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle termination termination is with two branches superficial terminal branch and the deep terminal branch as i have already discussed that the deep terminal branch is the posterior interosseous nerve so this is the posterior interosseous nerve see here in this diagram it is supplying all muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm also the deep muscles anterior to the lateral epicondyle as we have discussed that it will pass through the anteriorly to the lateral epicondyle the radial nerve divides into deep and the superficial branches the deep branch of the radial nerve is entirely muscular and articular in its distribution that is it will supply the muscles which is the posterior interosseous nerve the superficial branch of the radial nerve is entirely cutaneous in its distribution supplying the sensation to the dorsum of the hand and the fingers remember this thing that the super superficial branch of the radial nerve which is shown here in the red color distribution it is entirely cutaneous and it is supplying the skin of the lateral three and a half fingers okay excepting the nail bed because nail beds they are supplied by the median nerve okay so dorsum of the hand and the fingers lateral three and a half part it is supplied by the superficial branch of the radial nerve this superficial branch of the radial nerve is a cutaneous Uh, branch of the radial nerve then the deep branch deep branch is the posterior interosseous nerve it is supplying the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm see here these the three sensory nerves which are supplying the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm see here in this part it is also supplied by the radial nerve then the blue area this is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm this is the branch of the radial nerve then the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm see here this is also sensory cutaneous it is supplying the posterior compartment of the forearm okay but there is one branch which is deep branch of the radial nerve it is entirely muscular this deep branch will supply the muscles or deep muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm if there is any injury to the radial nerve in the arm see here if the radial nerve is injured in the arm if it is superior to the origin of its branches to the triceps brachii muscle 
okay what they are saying they are saying that if the radial nerve is injured superior to the origin of its branches to the triceps brachii result in the paralysis of the triceps the brachioradialis the supinator and the extensor muscles of the wrist and the fingers and there will be loss of sensation in the areas of the skin which are supplied by this nerve also occur now what is wrist drop see here in this diagram you can see that the wrist is dropped when the nerve is injured in the radial groove see here if the radial nerve is injured in the spiral groove or the radial groove the triceps is usually not completely paralyzed but only weakened okay what we have discussed before if the radial nerve is injured in the axilla or in the upper part of the arm before it is supplying the triceps muscle if it is injured here then the triceps muscle will be paralyzed but if the radial nerve is injured in the spiral groove then the tricep muscle is not paralyzed it is only weakened okay because only the medial head is affected how uh, and the long and the lateral head they will not be affected however muscles in the posterior compartment of forearm that are supplied by the most distal branches of the radial nerve they will be paralyzed okay the triceps muscle long and the lateral head will not be paralyzed the medial head will be paralyzed along with the more distal uh, muscles which are supplied by the distal branches of the radial nerve they will be uh, paralyzed the characteristic clinical sign of the radial nerve injury is the distal is the wrist drop remember this thing it will come in your mcq that wrist drop occurred due to radial nerve injury what is wrist drop it is inability to extend the wrist and the fingers at the metacarpophalangeal joint because the radial nerve is supplying the most extensors of the forearm and the fingers so if the radial nerve is not working so all the muscles which are extensors they will be paralyzed and there will be inability to extend the wrist and the fingers at the metacarpophalangeal joint see here in this diagram this is wrist drop now we will discuss the artery which is supplying the posterior compartment of arm this is the profunda brachii artery it is the first branch of the brachial artery it is the main arterial supply to the posterior compartment of arm it descends through the lower triangular space with the radial nerve as we have discussed before that it will pass along with the radial nerve into the spiral groove where it is covered by the lateral head of the triceps it terminates by dividing into anterior and the posterior descending branches now the branches of the profunda brachii artery see here in this diagram this is brachial artery and this is the profunda brachii artery first of all it will give muscular branches to the triceps muscle then it will give one ascending branch see here ascending branch will anastomose with the descending branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery then it is giving nutrient artery to the humerus then the anterior descending branch will anastomose with the radial recurrent artery the radial artery will give the radial recurrent artery which is anastomosing with the anterior descending branch of the profunda brachii artery and the posterior descending branch of the profunda brachii artery is anastomosing with the antrocious recurrent artery okay antrocious recurrent artery anterior descending is anastomosing with the radial recurrent and the posterior descending is anastomosing with the antrocious recurrent artery